Good morning, my name is Adriana Sakula and I am the chair of the Kissimmee Osceola Chamber of Commerce. Thank you all for joining us today for another 15 minute series on timely topics. It is October, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and we are so grateful to have our chamber members and trustee partners, Advent Health, sponsoring this week's uh, 15 minute series and introducing you today to Dr. Amber Orman, a medical doctor at Advent Health, who is double board certified radiation oncologist and lifestyle medicine specialist who joined Advent Health from the medical staff at Moffitt Cancer Center, where she was listed by her peers as a Tampa top doctor. We're grateful that she's here in Central Florida with us now, and also was on the faculty of the University of South Florida's College of Medicine. Her primary focus is on breast cancer with an emphasis on whole person care that encompasses the mind, body, and spirit. Dr. Orman is also the co-founder of the Healthy Eating and Active Lifestyle Program, or HEAL, H-E-A-L, for patients and survivors of Advent Health's Cancer Institute. Her research interests include integrative therapies and their application to cancer prevention, treatment and survivorship. I'm so excited to bring Dr. Orman here on our series today. Uh, she has a very unique take on, um, on breast cancer prevention that really focuses on healthy habits such as nutrition, exercise, and mindfulness. So we are very excited to have you here, Dr. Orman. Uh, please say hello, introduce yourself to everyone watching, and take it away. Hi, thank you, Adriana. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, it's October, so this is our Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, so we wanted to touch base with everybody. I want to share some information with you uh, regarding lifestyle medicine and what you can do to actually reduce your risk of breast cancer and breast cancer recurrence. And then I'll tell you about some exciting things we have going in Advent Health this month to help you get your mammograms uh, in an easier fashion, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I've got a short presentation to share with you. Okay. So lifestyle medicine is my uh, kind of second field. So I'm a radiation oncologist, but more recently I've also been board certified in lifestyle medicine. And what it is, it's a relatively new field of medicine, um, and it's using a whole food plant predominant dietary lifestyle, regular physical activity, restorative sleep, stress management, avoidance of risky substances like tobacco, alcohol, drugs, and positive social connection as an actual therapeutic modality for the treatment and reversal of chronic disease. So lifestyle medicine is really about getting away from pills and procedures and uh, using lifestyle in a more therapeutic manner, okay? And what's wonderful about lifestyle medicine is that it improves our healthcare system, okay? And it actually works on all four aspects of what we call the quadruple aim. So it enhances the patient experience because patients are getting healthier and feeling better. Um, it improves population health for obvious reasons. The patients have less disease when they're living a healthier lifestyle. It can reduce healthcare costs because we need less uh, sick care, as I like to call it. Um, and it improves the work life of healthcare providers because we hope that anyone that is uh, using lifestyle medicine in their medical practice with their patients is also doing it in their own lives. So they're becoming more personally fulfilled, but also more professionally fulfilled fulfilled because they're seeing great improvements in their patient's health. Um, so the way that I use it is in an integrative oncology approach. So I combine lifestyle medicine with my field of radiation oncology. Um, so it's the coordinated use of evidence-based complementary therapies alongside our conventional therapies, which are surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. And in breast cancer, I think it's particularly uh, important because over half of my breast cancer patients are already using something that qualifies as a uh, complementary or alternative medicine, be it um, supplements or acupuncture or whatever the case, okay? But a lot of people don't mention it to their doctors because they're afraid of uh, different things, you know, being told not to do it or uh, being shamed or just feeling not supported in general. 
So the current situation in the United States is uh, pretty grim. So six out of 10 people actually have a chronic disease and four out of 10 have two or more chronic diseases. And when we're talking about chronic diseases, we're talking about heart disease, cancer, chronic lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, okay? So things that we commonly hear of. And all of these things account for 90% of our healthcare spending. Well, we're also in a cancer epidemic. And so each year in the United States, 1.7 million people are diagnosed with a cancer. And over 600,000 people die from cancer each year. Okay. And this is expected to cost us here, just in this country alone, $174 billion this year. Now, breast cancer is the most common female cancer diagnosis in the United States. And you've all heard the statistic of one in eight women. Um, and it's the second leading cause of female cancer death because it is so common. Now, this is a really interesting graph and I don't want you to get caught up in the colors and the bars and all the text, but just look at the very top line, the longest line, it says dietary risks, okay? And it is the longest line because dietary risks are the uh, top cause of death in this country, okay? And this is a very respected publication. This comes out in the Journal of the American Medical Association every few years. This is not new news. Um, and it's really sad that poor diet quality is the leading risk factor associated with death in this country, okay? But um, the good news is that about 80% of our heart disease, stroke, and type two diabetes and 40% of all our cancers can actually be prevented if we all worked on improving our diet and our lifestyle, okay? So while we know that we are in trouble, it's something that we have within our control. But right now, about 90% of US adults do not consume the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, and 75% of adults fail to meet published exercise guidelines. And when I say published exercise guidelines, what I mean is, you are doing something to move your body, some sort of cardiovascular exercise for 30 minutes, at least five days a week, and you're doing two to three days of something for muscles, so strength training using bands or weights or body weight, you know, this can be yoga, Pilates, whatever, okay? So the combination of 150 minutes a week of moderate cardiovascular activity and two to three days a week of strength training, okay, is the goal. So why are our doctors not talking about this with us? So um, there was a survey of oncologists in 2018 and they basically wanted to assess their understanding and their practice behaviors related to counseling their cancer patients on diet, physical activity, and weight management, okay? And it's interesting because all of them agreed, there's strong evidence that uh, patients that suffer from overweight or obesity have poor cancer outcomes. They all agreed that the treating physician should make some sort of recommendation to their survivors regarding nutrition, weight management, and exercise, but 83% of them felt that additional training was needed in order to talk to their cancer patients about this. And this really gets to the root of the problem because our medical education system is not set up, okay, to foster this type of um, practice. So for example, when I went through uh, medical school, there was zero mention of nutrition. And I actually had started studying it in my undergraduate. So it was something I was carrying with me the entire time. And so I had an independent study going along beside my medical education. And I was just astounded the entire way that there was no mention of nutrition and exercise and the benefits in terms of reducing all of these chronic diseases and improving outcomes. But we have patients who are diagnosed with cancer every day. And so we should be able to say at least something because it's a very teachable moment if we know what to say. Now we've actually had recommendations for quite a while, okay? Um, this is just one set of recommendations from the American Institute for Cancer Research. And their latest list has 10 items, okay? And it says what you think it'd say. It says be a healthy weight, be physically active, eat a plant-rich diet, limit your consumption of fast foods and processed foods, limit your red meat and your processed meat like bacon and deli meats and things like this, limit sugar sweetened drinks, limit alcohol consumption, and if you're really wanting to prevent cancer, abstain from alcohol. Don't use supplements for cancer prevention, okay? There's no supplement that's proven to prevent cancer. However, diet can if you're eating a plant-based diet. 
for mothers, breastfeed your baby if you can. And after a diagnosis of cancer, continue following these recommendations because they work both to prevent cancer in the first place and to prevent cancer recurrence. And you'll notice we don't even talk about not smoking or uh, avoiding excess sun because those things are very, very um, kind of givings now, okay? It's just understood that smoking is bad for you. And I think in you know 15 years or so, when we have overwhelming amounts of data and nobody can ignore it anymore, we'll also know that eating a healthy diet um, is quite obvious in terms of uh, improving our health, okay? So what is the impact if you do these things in terms of breast cancer? Okay, these 10 items. Well, there's um, two wonderful studies. Uh, that I like to quote. So in the first study, they had over 30,000 postmenopausal women. They followed them for a median of seven years and compared those women meeting five or more of those recommendations to those meeting zero of the recommendations. And we saw that we could decrease new breast cancer diagnoses by 60%, okay? 60%. There's another study looking at over 31,000 postmenopausal women and they followed them for almost or a little over double that time, 15 years. And they compared those meeting six or more of the 10 items on the list, those meeting two or less. And they still found a 51% reduction in breast cancer incidence, okay? So even if you do a few of them, you will still reduce your risk of breast cancer somewhat, not as much as, uh, as if you do more, okay? The last study looked at almost 350,000 people, followed them for five years, and they compared those meeting five or more of the things on the list to less than one, and they found a 32% reduction in all cancers, okay? Because this, this study actually included men as well, so we could reduce all, all of our cancer diagnoses in men and women and everybody by 32%. And if we're talking about breast cancer alone, we could reduce them by 35%. Okay, so the moral of the story is the more of the 10 things on the list that you check off, the lower your cancer risk. And what if you already have breast cancer? Okay, so this is a prospective study, meaning that they followed people from time zero forward, and they looked at 1,500 postmenopausal women. Okay, all of them had early stage breast cancer, and they were enrolled about two years after diagnosis. And they saw that if people were consuming five or more servings of fruits and vegetables and walking 30 minutes a day on six days a week, they could reduce their risk of death by 50%, okay, 50%. So this is life-saving stuff here, eating your plants and moving your body. And the benefit was seen in both obese and non-obese women, okay, and that's interesting because even if you don't lose weight doing this, you are reducing inflammation in your body and reducing inflammation in your body is key if you want to improve your overall health outcomes, okay? Because it frees your immune system up to do the things that it was meant to do. This is another wonderful study looking at 50,000 postmenopausal women, okay? They did not have cancer at the time they went into the study. They were randomized between a reduced fat plant-based diet, okay? So 20% of the calories were from uh, fat and the rest were from carbohydrates and proteins but it was plant predominant, okay, versus the standard American diet. It was an eight and a half year study and they were followed for 17.7 years, okay? And they found that the risk of death after breast cancer diagnosis, okay, during the eight and a half year intervention was actually reduced by 35% if they were following a plant-based diet, okay? So if people were diagnosed with breast cancer during this study, they had a 35% decreased risk of dying from it if they were eating plants, okay? Then the really interesting thing about this study is that after it was over, they said, okay, ladies, go home, eat whatever you want. At 17 years later, almost 18 years later, those people who had followed the plant-based diet during the study were still seeing a 15% decrease in their risk of death. So even if you have a period of time where you're following a plant-based diet and you kind of fall off the wagon, you're still going to get a benefit from that period of time later in life. Now, physical activity is also very important, and it's estimated that 40% of our breast cancer cases could be decreased uh, if we were physically active, regardless of your menopausal status, 
um, the type of breast cancer, or sorry, the type of exercise or the intensity of exercise, okay? And multiple studies have demonstrated an almost 30% decrease in breast cancer specific and overall mortality, okay? Meaning 30% less deaths from breast cancer or from all causes in general if uh, breast cancer patients are physically active, okay? So, all of this information has always been incorporated into my practice, um, you know, at Moffitt and here at Advent. But more recently, we have formalized it into a program called HEAL, Healthy Eating, Active Lifestyle, okay? And this is an evidence-based, comprehensive, peer-supported program that's meant to engage and inspire our patients decrease risk of recurrence, and improve their comorbid conditions, okay? And what we want to do is extend people's health span, okay, as I like to call it. We don't want to just help you live longer. We want to help you live well, okay? So the current focus is on breast cancer, and that's my piece of this program. And we also have a gynecologic cancer um, arm led by my colleague, Dr. Natalie McKenzie. So in the Heal Breast program, uh, currently we're running our program on Zoom for obvious reasons. It's an eight-week intensive lifestyle immersion program. It's based on the six pillars of lifestyle medicine that we spoke about earlier. And we also talk about treatment toxicities and body image, cancer-related sexual issues. We go over purpose, connectedness, and communication, relationships, and things like this. Um, this is our fabulous team. So we have a plant-based uh, Ruby certified registered dietitian. So he's actually gone to a special cooking school that shows you how to uh, incorporate more plants into your life. We have a mindfulness coach who's also a certified clinical hypnotherapist. We have a clinical psychotherapist who's a certified life and also a certified life coach, two different people. We have two certified personal trainers and we have a wonderful oncology social worker and nurse practitioner. So together uh, we conduct this eight week program on Zoom and we've had very, very uh, wonderful feedback from our participants so far. And so quickly, I'm just gonna show you what this can do in um, my kind of a typical patient's life, okay? So this is a 66 year old postmenopausal female. She had kind of a run of the mill stage one breast cancer. She had a lot of other comorbidities, cardiovascular disease, peripheral arterial disease, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, type two diabetes, reflux, chronic kidney disease, and depression. Um, and she was on a lot of medications, okay? Uh, so as you can imagine with all of these things going on, she was eating the standard American diet, which is very meat heavy. She had a lot of processed foods involved, heavy oils, soda, fast food, and excess quantities, okay? Um, she wasn't doing any movement aside from her activities of daily living, and she was actually not sleeping very well, so when she would get up at night, she would eat a little more, because uh, why not at that point? And so she, but she was really not saying, you know, I have any extra stress in my life or anything like this. She had a strong church family, and her spouse was very supportive, so it was really just these habits that we were going to work on. Uh, had drank alcohol use, or distant smoker, excuse me, but no alcohol use or anything like that to, to contend with. So we started extensive lifestyle counseling, uh, worked in a whole food plant-based diet, physical activity, intermittent fasting, worked on her sleep habits, uh, brought in deep breathing exercises and a variety, of course, of uh, uh, references and resources for her. And so during radiation, we have weekly visits. If any of you ever receive radiation therapy, you know you see your doctor once a week. So those are good touch points for me to kind of work on goal setting with my patients. Um, and then every three to four months thereafter, okay, I was coordinating with her primary care physician, cardiologist, and nephrologist, okay, because she was actually coming off of medications, um, so we were working with her other doctors as well. Okay, so uh, in terms of nutrition, she went to about an 80% whole food plant-based diet. She was using some transitional vegan meats like the Beyond Burger and, uh, you know, all the, the Impossible Burger, things like this. She had some occasional fish still in her diet, and she was actually using um, intermittent fasting in the form of time-restricted feeding, so eating all of her meals in an eight-hour time window during the day. In terms of movement, she was using daily kayaking with a pedal-powered kayak. She eliminated the late-night eating because she was sleeping through the night, and so she wasn't up anymore. And her spouse also adopted the changes, which, of course, makes it much, much easier. Um, now, these are her labs, and now I don't want you to worry about interpreting any of these, but just notice that on the left 
are her numbers on medications. And on the right are her numbers one year later off medications. And so we saw a global improvement in everything, okay? And her chronic kidney disease actually improved, which is quite remarkable. Um, cholesterol, the total cholesterol went up, but she had gone off medication. So that's to be expected, but it's still within the safe range, okay? Um, and it did continue to go down as time went on. Her HDL, the good cholesterol, went up. Her hemoglobin A1C went down by an entire percentage point. Her pulse went down. Her blood pressure went down. And she lost about 30 pounds, okay? And so we decreased all of her major comorbidities. She ended, going, ended up off of all of her medications. Of course, decreased her risk of dying from breast cancer and having a breast cancer recurrence. Um, and if she continues this, you know, she, uh, I'm sure she'll live a lot longer and a lot healthier as will her family because they've all now adopted quite a few of these changes. So, um, I just wanted to share those things with you today, you know, to show you the vast impact that these things can have in your life. Okay. The other thing that's also very important is getting your screening mammograms. Okay. This is how we find breast cancers early. Okay. We don't want to find them uh, later on. We want to find things as early as possible. So you have as many treatment options as possible. And so this month through October 31st, Advent Health has $30 mammograms. Um, they have online scheduling and flexible hours. So you can go on evenings and weekends. Most of the appointments take 30 minutes or less. Okay. So go to schedulyourmammo.com. This is a very important component of your health. Okay, so we will put these um, links in the comments, uh, but if you'd like to know more about the HEAL program, you can go to adventhealthcancerinstitute.com backslash HEAL breast. If you would like to schedule an appointment with me personally for any reason, whether it be lifestyle medicine or for breast cancer reasons, um, we'll also have a link to um, my scheduling included in the comments, okay? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and answer any few remaining questions before I run off to the clinic. Thank you so much, Dr. Orman, for joining us today. Such insightful information and really powerful, some of those percentages, uh, the decrease of not only breast cancer, but death by truly just eating your fruits and vegetables and, and walking. And, and when you talk about the intensity of exercise, I think that really rings a bell for a lot of people or should at least to say, it isn't that difficult. You can reduce anywhere from 50, 40% decrease in breast cancer despite um, intensity of physical activity, 50% uh, reduced death by those who consume five servings of vegetables and fruits a day. I think it's something that's an easy fix when you really think about it. And I don't think a lot of people really put that into, into effect. And it's really important that we continue spreading that message. And what you're doing through the HEAL program is so incredibly important. And I feel like it's a real holistic wraparound of everything we need in medicine right now, especially in the United States. So thank you so so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, thank you. And thank you again to Advent Health, one of our chamber trustees, and also a sponsor of our wonderful program. And thank you all for tuning in. If you do have any questions, you can reach out to the chamber or our friends at Advent Health with the information that was provided on this webcast. Have a great day. Bye-bye.